as an actor, I actually, I think before I realized you were a director, I knew you were an, an actor. So how did you get into the whole acting thing? Oh, right. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, for, for me, what happened was, um, you know, when I was younger, I always sort of thought to myself, I'd like to be an actor, um, you know, more, more when I was a kid and whatever, and started becoming interested in films and filmmaking but never really felt I had the confidence to to do that I mean the irony being is I always thought actors were you know incredibly self-confident individuals <laughs> I've obviously <laughs> since learned that that's not necessarily the case um, but so uh, it was never really on my radar um, as such to go to you know drama school and I, I certainly wasn't into sort of song or dance or anything like that so, um, you, you, you know, it had always, for me, been filmmaking first. But what happened is, uh, as you know from these previous podcasts, I lived in the US. Uh, I went to film school there. And while I was out in film school, um, I think I mentioned that I'd done quite a lot of working on uh, film sets, working on UCF, University of Central Florida, um, films, shorts and features. And uh, while I was working on one of those, I was actually approached because um, one of the uh, uh, one of the lecturers at the one of the film lecturers was making uh, a short film or, or rather the first 10 minutes of a feature film to try and get funding uh, to, to, to make the full film. And they needed uh, an English guy for this role. <laughs> and it was approached that was I interested in in uh, going to meet this director? And I thought to myself, well, you know what? It, it can't hurt. Let's go and meet this guy. Um, so I went and met them and they basically introduced me to this actress. And they said, right, we just want to sort of run a couple of scenarios and see if there's any sort of chemistry here and see what we can get going. And this was obviously going to be their lead actress in this story. And their, the film at the time was called uh, London Calling, you know, as in the song title, I think. And yeah. it was mm -hmm. a film about a, uh, a girl who um, lives somewhere in the Midwest in the States and gets, gets pregnant and, goes over to England to sort of get away with things and on the plane meets this English guy and, you know, a romance begins and, and I, I, I don't know where the fuck the story goes from there, but because that's all I was told, <laughs> but it was kind of that sort oh, of thing. Right. right. And they wanted to film sort of the first 10 minutes of this. So um, I hadn't had any real acting experience, any acting lessons. I was only sort of in my early mid twenties or whatever at this point. And, um, uh, I, you know, I, I came along and they, they asked me to do a few sort of improvisational type things. And, um, you, you know, they asked about what I was studying and why I was studying it and all this sort of thing. And, um, before I knew it, a few days later, I had a call on my answer machine because obviously this is pre mobile phones, <laughs> uh, pages and whatever. Uh, uh, you know, ask him saying that they, they, they'd like to talk to me in a bit more detail about it. So I went and saw them and basically that they, they had these shoot dates, they had this script and they asked me whether I'd like to do it. And I thought, well, this is this, blimey gift horse in the mouth here. Is this going to be the beginning of a wonderful acting career? Fucking hell, you know, so sure I'll do it. You know, so I went, and here, here's the bizarre thing. And again, Simon, you'll probably say, Oh, Keith, you've never mentioned this before, but my first day of filming, get this for a, um, uh, an interesting first experience in this. We shot at Disney MGM Studios on the set, the airplane fuselage set of Passenger 57, the, Wes the Wesley <laughs> Snipes film, right? This what, you mean you bet on black? Yeah, <laughs> there you go. And this was actually, the, the, the set was in part of the MGM studio tour, all right? And they had got, they'd managed to get this set uh, for free. So they got the inside of a 747 jet uh, as, as a set for free. But, <laughs> and this is where it was very bizarre, the condition was that um, the tour would still be running. So 
they could shoot, but every 20 oh, minutes, my. a carriage oh. of, of Floridian, you know, or sort of, should I say international um, uh, visitors, you know, tourists would be coming along on the trolley bus with a, somebody going, and on the set here is, is the uh, fuselage from the plane from passenger 57, and they'd all be taking photos and shit. Right? <laughs> so this is rather bizarre because there's this nobody actor, me, who's never done anything before in his life, you know, and and suddenly there's hundreds of people coming by on this tour seeing me on set acting with this actress and a full film crew and all this sort of thing and i bet they're all thinking oh what major film is that coming out you know so it was a really bizarre situation but i was i was um so i did that uh i actually yeah. thought i i looked totally wrong for the role because what they dressed me in was a three-piece suit which you know i like to think i look pretty good in in suits you know i've always been comfortable in a suit However, I was at film school at the time, Simon, and, and you're, you're certainly in your current um, styling understand what I'm talking <laughs> about here. I had long hair that was practically down to, you know, my shoulder blades. Yeah. Oh, right. And I also okay. had a goatee beard. You know, I was doing the typical film <laughs> student party uh, thing, and it was my opportunity to grow my hair out and grow facial hair and all this sort of thing. So I was in a three-piece suit, but I had my hair slicked back in a ponytail and I had this goatee beard. And I sort of thought to myself, yeah, if, if I was going to do this properly, you'd need the sort of, you know, clean cut, haircut, clean shave, you know, all that sort of thing. So I, I felt a little straight away, I felt a little uncomfortable. I didn't sort of feel that I looked the part um, for starters. The other thing was, uh, it was very hot on this set. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I was, un I realized I was incredibly sweaty as well, bearing in mind, I'm, I'm supposed to be playing a kind of romantic lead role here. And I sort of thought, <laughs> hmm. the other big problem was this was directed by a husband and wife directing duo. All right. And okay. The problem I had was, bearing in mind, I was not an experienced or a trained actor at this point. I had um, the husband come up to me and give me one direct go behind the camera to fiddle. And then right before they were going to roll, his wife would come up and she would give me a completely different direction altogether. So that by the time they actually said action and the clapperboard was in my face and I think the student hadn't heard of soft sticks at that time so smack the board in my face you know leaving me dazed um you, you know I didn't really know what I was doing and when I did I did see some months later I saw this five minute sequence for this film on a big screen uh I thought I was absolutely appalling in it in every level uh, they also spelt my name incorrectly in the credits, which I wasn't too impressed with. Um, I know I've not got the easiest surname, but come on, guys, get it right. And, you know, where is it for a second yeah. there? I was thinking... Nobody nobody get that wrong. No, exactly. And whereas for a second there, I was thinking to myself, oh, uh, you, you know, um, this could be a nice opportunity to lead to a, a career that I hadn't expected sadly uh it, it led nowhere and i don't know whether that film ever got made or not okay but you know in terms of a first time acting gig what an experience right so it was yeah. it was sort of straight in at the you know full crew uh big you know airplane set you know it, it, on mgm studios so i was like wow okay um what it did make me realize however and this is something i think Clive touched on in in the podcast last time that I found quite interesting um was it made me realize yeah uh, one of the things I need to do is I need to understand a little bit more about acting because that's you know by this point I learned a lot of the technical stuff um knew a lot of sort of film theory and techniques and all that uh, but what I wasn't understanding was really what an actor goes through and what an actor needs. And Clive mentioned there are different types of actors, of course. You know, there are some that yeah. have studied Strasbourg and Stanislavski. There are others that have done Meisner. 
you, you know, there, there, there's, there's, there's all different kinds of methods out there, if you like, um, and actors work very differently. Now, uh, I have since gone on to study when I, what I did is I did a, when I moved to LA, I did a, uh, summer course at UCLA, um, which was specifically on screen acting, because as, as I said, I wasn't particularly interested in theatre or song and dance and all that. I had massive appreciation for all of that, but that wasn't really me. Um, so I did some classes and these classes involved us meeting casting directors and agents and, and things like that, things of that nature. And, you know, I got, I have to say, you know, um, my mum always says to me, you know, don't keep hiding your light under a bush all the time and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I, I got some fairly good feedback. You know, they love the English thing out there. Um, they thought I, I don't know quite how I took this, but they thought I had an actor look. I don't, I, to this day, I don't really know what that means exactly, but I, I, I'm guessing it was a compliment, I think. Um, and, you know, they thought I had maybe something. Uh, there were two things that I was asked to work on. One was I needed to be able to do an American accent if I was going to, uh, um, you, you know, be marketable in the US for sure. Uh, the other thing was, um, I'll be honest, I, uh, yeah, I went out to film school in extremely good shape. Uh, but I lived in the US for a few years. And by the time I got to the end of it, I put on a little bit of weight. It's fair to say, right? Um, you know, I'm not a naturally lean guy. Uh, and one of the things that America is big on is, if, especially if you're going to fall into what they were calling the sort of leading man uh, area, um, you needed to be in fairly good shape. So they told me I needed to work on that. Um, shortly after all this happened, the, the saga that I've already told you about having to come back to England happened. Yeah. So I came back to England. But as part of this course, you were supposed to do a showcase um, three months later. And I still had my place and ticket for that. So what happened is even though I came back to England, I still went back out to the US to do the showcase in Los Angeles. Um, oh, right. And what I, Can I just asked, sorry. did you did you need to get a new visa for that? No, uh, because I was going out, out just for, um, uh, you know, this showcase, you could just travel on a um, on a, the, the whole visa that that would be a very long podcast and long conversation because yeah but i it's mean quite complex. If, if you go on holiday to the states you need a yes, visa yes you do and the other so, the thing that the thing that so a lot you, of, were you just able to just go over on a holiday visa yes then? for the showcase yes however yeah, okay. um and i need to make this very clear because a lot of companies sell this the wrong way people seem to think that if you go out on a uh, a British passport on a normal visa, yeah, for a holiday. And you, you did something like an acting showcase and suddenly by some miracle you were, you were snapped up for a role, that that means you can then go and work on it. And that is definitely not the case. You need a specific visa if you're going to do that. So I went out there with no illusions that I was going to suddenly be working in Hollywood because it doesn't work that way. Um so, but I went out to do the showcase to to get feedback, and uh, and I figured it can't hurt, right? So yeah. I got myself. I did get a personal trainer, and I got myself in in pretty good shape. And I worked on a lot of things. And I went back out there, and I did the showcase. And you you know it it, it was good experience. Uh, it, I, I had some good feedback, but you know I never I never got snapped up by Hollywood. <laughs> and I came back to England. The advice I was given, which which always made me laugh, um, this was an advice by a lawyer, was, you know, this is when I was trying to get my visa in the first place, which was just, you, you know, as a filmmaker and or just to work out there. And, you, you yeah. know, the whole thing about acting came up and they sort of said, oh, yeah, well, you know, go go back to the UK and and uh, and, and become like the next Ewan McGregor and uh, you'll be fine. And I thought, Oh yeah, that'll be easy then. <laughs> so, but anyway, I, I did come back to London and I did study some act, further acting. I did a post grad um, 
uh, course with with Lambda. Um, but that wasn't, as I said, again, that wasn't the full on song dance uh, theatre thing. It was just a, an acting. Uh, I think they called it the silver medal thing, uh, which I did and, and accomplished. And that was good because I had to learn a bit of classical stuff for that. So there was a little bit of Shakespeare and and those sort of things involved. I'm, I'm not a classical or a classically trained actor by any means, any any shape or form. Um, and, you know, I've, I've done various courses and worked at it and, and yes, had various uh, parts in short films and independent features. And, 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 you know, I've even acted in one of my own films to, to, to try that out. Um, you, you know, we've said on can previous, I... sorry, go, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Can, uh, a question that sprung to mind was you were saying about actors and the different uh, training that they've taken. Yes. Now, as a, my experience of a director is that no matter what the training's been, it doesn't affect how I direct them. Do you think that's, am I being naive there? No, I mean, I don't think you're being naive. I, I think, I think it's a very, very complicated thing anyway. I mean, let's be honest, the filmmaking itself isn't difficult enough. Um, you know, acting and dealing with actors and all that sort of thing is is a, is a whole nother element. I don't think it, it makes any difference as such in terms of the actual direction that you're giving them necessarily. I think it has more to do with the uh, atmosphere or the surrounding on set. And what I mean by that is, you know, some actors, as soon as you say cut, We'll crack a joke and have a laugh and goof around with the crew and whatever. Whereas other actors wish to stay in character and go off in a corner and not speak to anyone. Right. And neither one of those yeah. approaches is, is, is right or wrong. Um, it's just the way certain people operate. The hard thing I think with filmmaking from a director's point of view is kind of managing that and understanding the, the, the various needs of the individuals. And this is something that really, until you start working with them, you, you can't figure this out anyway. No. Um, you, you know, nobody comes and tells you that, do they? It's kind of... <laughs> yeah. But how, how can learning to be an actor help you be a director? I think, I mean, this is, this is the thing that I'm, I'm curious to know. Right. Well, it's, it's actually interesting you say that because I did a um, I did an interview for Actor Base, um, which is one of the things Zav Rodriguez runs once. And one of the questions he asked me, in fact, I've just got it up here on screen, was does your acting background help when you are directing and vice versa? And if so, how? And my answer to this was, I think that answer is a definite yes. There are many directors out there that are masters of storytelling as far as camera and editing go, but find it hard to get great performances out of their actors because they don't understand different actor processes and requirements. Being able to communicate to actors in their terms can certainly generate a shorthand on set, which is great when you're up against time, which you always are. Also, there are lots of great actors that have been trained classically and don't necessarily understand the subtleness of screen acting continuity etc so i think filmmaking knowledge helps with my acting too <laughs> so i've just literally read what i answered there because i think you know that's that's kind of kind of it but i mean it, it's much more complicated than 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 no. i've simplified okay it there, you know yeah i mean okay so let's let me just delve into your sort of directing style a little okay. bit then so if if you're if you're talking to an actor about a scene or or a, an emotion that they can convey, how would you do it? Okay, basically, um, I always look at the questions actors usually want answering, and I say usually, yeah, is, you know, who am I, where am I, why am I here, what do I want? Yeah, they, 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 they like lots of verbiage in terms of... of, of direction what they don't like what actors generally hate is a line reading so they don't like people to just say oh say the line this way or put this emphasis here uh, i mean some directors direct like that and that's fine you know it works for them 
but a lot of actors they they tend to want to know what they want in a scene you know that is that whole what is my motivation which is which is kind of cheesy to say but but that's what a lot of them want um what i usually point out to them is you know because because obviously filmmaking unlike theater is not chronological uh, you, you know it's a lot of shooting out of sequence and repetition and all those sort of things i usually try and remind them as to sort of where they are in the story in terms of their character arc and what's just happened before they've walked into the room um you, you know to try and give them some idea as, as to what they might feel and what they want want the thing is i think with any directing it just needs to be short clear and concise I, I i've worked with a lot of and i've seen a lot of directors that will ha, and and this is going to sound funny coming from me now right <laughs> that'll that'll <laughs> waffle on for ages right about a load of backstory and 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 stuff like that whereas sometimes all the character all the actor needs is a few words or a few you know verbs as to as to what they're doing or what they're thinking or what the emotion is behind the lines so it's, it's not always necessarily about what the line is but it's like what's the intention behind the lines and yeah. um uh often you know as i said you can over talk it and overthink it uh the other thing is i've had i've had direction before from directors which is l literally this and I, i'll quote OK, so in this scene, you're happy, but you're also a little bit sad. Well, that's not very helpful at all, because those are two completely conflicting <laughs> emotions. Yeah. So how do you play what well, happy, but a little bit sad? You know, if they'd used a word like melancholy or something, it might have helped more, you know, and, and it, it's, it's just I, I don't know. It, it, it's not it, it, it's an impossible. Given that situation, if, if you were in that director's shoes. Yeah. What would you say to the actor to try and get those emotions? Oh, God. Uh, OK, I'm on the spot here now. Um, well, I mean, uh, you, you know, I, I would I would just try and. I would just try and uh, talk to them about, you know, what's just happened and why they feel that way. Yeah. Um, but you, you've got to try and find something, an emotion or a memory or something in them that will that will um give across that feeling i mean you know there's this whole you, you, and i'm sure you know all about this this there's this whole thing where uh you know the hitchcock thing about the the, the close-up of someone's face and whatever image you cut to when you cut back they can have exactly the same expression but say a totally different thing yeah <laughs> you know the, 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 yeah but the, i mean that's 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 just film yeah language. i mean, film I, mean grammar. I mean it's if you're trying to sort of you're you're playing a scene out where you you've got somebody who's happy but who could be like who on the outside is happy but could be inside sad and you kind of want to show those kind of things you know just trying to get that out of the actors trying to it's hard express i mean that. it, it would hard, depend yeah. on the situation what I, what i'd say is if if they're really supposed to be sad for example um you you need to tell them why they're sad you yep. know, because just saying somebody's sad is, is not enough. You know, why are they sad? Yeah. But also, if, if they need to appear happy on the outside, you'd have to give them a reason for that. So if, if they're acting with someone, you know, you'd say that you want them to think you're happy, <laughs> I guess. I mean, I don't know. This is a really, this is a really tough question well, yeah, to answer. It, it depends is, on isn't so it? many factors. Yeah. But, but um. Yeah, I mean, it would depend on the story. Yeah, it, it, it would, it would on really depend. But the other thing, yeah. the other thing, and I just found this exercise quite interesting because I had I'd not done this before. Um, I've just finished directing uh, a collaboration, which is um, a film that I've co-directed, which I was really apprehensive about doing um, because it's not something I'd done before. For, and I've, I've always taken I was looking at my sort of shorts and I've had a sort of almost like auteurs mentality to stuff and tried to be sort of quite a control freak on on everything but you know the truth of it is obviously film is a very collaborative uh, art form and what I said to the 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 co-director uh, Richard Nock on this um, basically he had an idea 
that he asked me to develop into a into a script into a screenplay and um he he's a classically trained actor and really wants to work with actors but doesn't want to get too involved in the technical side of filmmaking and you know composition and you know editing and uh you, you know choosing frame sizes camera moves and all that sort of thing um so you, you know i'm always want to learn something new with anything i try in in short films so in this particular instance i said i said this could be quite an interesting uh challenge and exercise but i said to him we have to you know i i'm always intrigued as to how director collaborations work because you know like the the coen brothers and they, they normally always seem to be siblings in most cases but um uh at fright fest i think we mentioned this on the podcast there was this directing duo uh that had just done this first time feature and i asked them how did they work you know what was their process and they didn't really answer it and i always find that the directors that co-direct never seem to answer that question um, but what we made clear was a very clear line. So Richard was responsible for directing performances and dealing with the actors. And I was responsible for working with the DOP and camera and all that sort of thing. And I would only really interfere with the actor if it was a blocking thing and if it was about, you know, setting up the frame. And I'd let him to talk to them about their, you know, feelings and emotions and all this sort of thing. And it actually... It actually works. You know, we didn't have too many disagreements on this because we we discussed a lot of it beforehand. But, you know, it is. Sorry, I've gone slightly off track, but it, it is a difficult <laughs> it is a difficult thing. And well, uh, no, because I mean, you, know. you talked about the first time you acted and you worked with a directing team where they did that whole thing of I call it tag team directing where they go. They they one goes in and tells you one thing and then they go back and they'd like tap the other guy in and they come in and they tell you something completely yeah, different. Yeah, that's very unhelpful. And then they, ex oh, you, you, I, I've, you need... I've been on a set like that. I've yeah. been on a set like that and my heart went out to the actors who had to deal with that because they didn't know if they were coming or going. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I work a lot with, um, or I used to, but before I sort of got the job I'm doing now, I used to work a lot with the Met School uh, in London and, uh, they would hire me as an actor for their direct, you know, working with actors um, course. And it was it was all about exactly what you're asking me. You know, what do actors mm. need? What do, And they're all different. I mean, they had some in there that were method actors that needed to know, you know, their life story from the moment their character was born up to the point where this scene starts. Yeah. Um, you know, but there are others that just, you, you know, want to know just what a very basic short um concise few words about what they're doing but we, we all work differently i mean i have to say from my point of view and 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 you know i'm not a classically trained actor at all but for me i work from the outside in and what i mean by that is if i look the part i can kind of be or fill the part so for me you know hair makeup wardrobe yeah, you know, the costume, props, all that sort of thing to me is very important. And I think that's because I'm a filmmaker first and foremost. So I'm all about the visual. I'm all about yeah. how something looks. Does the picture paint a thousand words? You know, all of that sort of thing. So when I do act, which, which you know, I'll be honest, the reason I carried on um, pursuing acting was because, uh, you know, A, I thought it would help my filmmaking, but also, you know, it's very enjoyable. It, it, I, I find I found it quite nice to sort of tap into other areas of my psyche and be different people and try different things. And, um, you, you know, I found it very interesting. My, my problem, I think, was, you know, uh, if I was going to have an acting career, I should have probably started a good 10 years earlier than I did. And, um you know, sadly, I never really got an an agent that was connected and knew the right people. I mean, I found it, I was getting on much better in the US um, than when I came back here to the UK. I found it very difficult because in the US, I guess I, although I wouldn't nowadays because there's, there's, there's hundreds of them, but <laughs> I guess I stood out a little bit at the time being the sort of Brit, Brit over there. Um, whereas I came back and suddenly I'm, 
you know Clark Kent again you know <laughs> but but um you, you know when I first moved to London I came here with high hopes because I was you know I was still young I was in great shape I was like sort of ready to to launch my career and uh, it didn't really happen um but the passion for filmmaking has never left and uh and and you know obviously if 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 I got offered you know I'm moving more into I'm, I, I hate to say it, it's a horrible feeling, but, you know, with, that, with an actor, when you're an actor, there is more of a, a sort of time limit on it to a certain extent, or you certainly move out of windows into different windows, and I'm probably moving more into character now, um, which, uh, yeah, yeah, is, is, a, is a different challenge and a different interest, but, of course, I would have lo- I'd have loved to have had a, a career like a, um, you know, like you and McGregor. Oh, right. I, I'm sorry. You did lose me a little bit there. So you, you were just saying that um, in your sort of uh, acting wise, you, you're you coming to that age where really you can't get like the leading man part unless you were really established, established it. And you're moving more into the character part where you're, you know, the supporting actor. I think so. I, I think so. I mean, yeah. Tom, Tom Hanks is famously, famously quoted as saying, in your 30s, you define your career as an actor. Yeah. Um, and, y- y- you know, uh, obviously a lot of my heroes growing up and whatever were, um, you know, they were probably in their early 30s, whatever, when they sort of made it big time. And obviously they'd probably been acting for a good decade before that. Um but yeah, I, I I don't know. I I kind of, I kind of, I still love it. But you know, it hasn't really happened for me. Um, I certainly haven't given up. But I do sort of. I I I'm sort of being realistic with myself that 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 some of the roles that I may have liked to have or have gone for in the past, um, you, you, you know, I probably couldn't play anymore. Um, but that's not to say that there aren't you know, hundreds of other roles out there that would be just as interesting to play. But but the thing with me is I've always have been first and foremost a filmmaker uh, who enjoys acting. Um, and a lot of my heroes growing up were, you know, did both. I mean, we've already had a podcast on Eastwood. You know, Clint Eastwood was a big hero of mine. Um, Kevin mm. Costner, big hero of mine. Um, you know, and now, of course, there are loads of direct, uh, guys doing this. You know, you've got Ben Affleck, you've got Ray Fiennes, you've got, you know, you know, the, the, the list goes on. I mean, the, this is the, another thing about the industry. I think I said this before, but um, I've noticed with acting in particular, um, whereas you used to have sort of theatre actors and TV actors and film actors, um, now they kind of, they're lucky and lucky enough to do all of that stuff plus commercials plus producing plus directing you know it's kind of if you're in that lucky few hundred you know you're you're sort of made as it were whereas you, you know i think that's a little bit harder to do perhaps when you're when you're older and you're not established um but you know and, and in terms of theater just to add something there uh I've, i haven't done it in more recent years but when i first moved to london I did every year do at least one piece of theatre and that was really to get myself out of my comfort zone. I thought it was a really good thing to do. Um, I am incredibly nervous doing theatre, doing live on stage and I found that a very interesting and cathartic thing to do. And I have to say, in terms of a process, um, you know, they say theatre is the the actor's medium, you know, whereas obviously film is more of a director's medium. And I I would agree with that because the process of workshopping and devising and finding the character and having rehearsals and all that in theatre is actually quite fun. And I mean, it's only really fringe theatre stuff that I've done over the years, but I've always really, really loved that process. Yeah, and there are a few directors. Obviously, there's the the Mike Lees and whatever, but there are a few directors nowadays that are lucky enough to uh, to have that process with their actors prior to filming. And I know this was a point Clive brought up with with his film acceptance is that 
he, he did have a lot of workshopping and working with his actresses and stuff prior to actually making the film, which, of course, then allowed him, you know, your question about how do you give an actor direction when you're trying to, like, set the shot and all this, you know, he'd, he'd obviously, by doing that, got over that hurdle and sort of had that yeah. shorthand by the time they got to set, which you know all about, because, of course, I forget, you shot it, didn't you? <laughs> I shot it, but, I mean, I, I wasn't privy to the whole rehearsal thing so yeah it's it's one of those things where um I, i've always sort of wanted to sort of do like a a bit of rehearsing before shooting mm-hmm. but never really had the opportunity yeah i mean it's a lot isn't it i think in the real is. world you very rarely have that luxury as as well, well i'll give you an know. example um that i'm going to be shooting like one one of the next stories for modern love soon and I've got an actress who's coming in from the States and I've got an actor who's working on other things. Wow. And I would have really loved just to got the two of them together in a room, mm-hmm. even if it was for like half a day and let's go for the script and hear it. And, and uh, now, unfortunately, they're going to meet on set. Yeah. We're going to meet on set and we're just going to do it. And yeah, you know, hope that it all works yeah well i mean something that's quite interesting this is the one time that that, if you like the one day of 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 in inverted commas fame that i had well it wasn't fame but in terms of doing the job professionally when i did first move to london i did get a um i went and auditioned uh for a casting director and got a part a small part in a film called it was called Action Star when they made it. It's been released under the name The Number One Girl. And this was a Vinnie Jones uh, film, uh, one, okay. of, one of those sort of ones they used to churn out. And right. um, I had a small part in it where I played a news reporter that, that interviews one of the, the characters. And it was such a bizarre experience because this was when I first moved to London. I'd given up everything to sort of come and be an actor, you know, and or, or filmmaker um, and work independently. And I was literally living in a bed sit in West London where I could sit on my single bed, I could cook and I could open a window without moving. And I know that sounds, <laughs> that, that sounds like the sort of thing you'd get in a in some actor's interview, but i lived like this for a long time and yeah uh i had this part and it was so bizarre because i got a phone call you know i'd obviously been cast but that morning my, my phone went and it was addison lee they had a car downstairs to pick me up right so i get yeah. into the car you know first thing in the morning and i'm driven to set okay and i get to set and, a, and an ad comes and introduces herself and takes me along and there's a trailer and uh it's got my name on the door and i go in the trailer and and they bring me breakfast you know (laughs) and then they bring in the costume and say oh you know there you go there's your costume i put that on and then i'm taken down into makeup and i'm in the makeup chair next to vinnie jones you know being made up for this film and then i you know go and we we film the scene and bizarre you know again the guy who hadn't really done anything the scene was set outside the, um, oh God, the name of the theatre has gone completely out of my head, but it's on uh, Shaftesbury Avenue, um, you know, at the Leicester Square end. Oh, I hate it that I can't think of it now. Oh, the Cambridge Theatre. Um, no, it's further down. It's before you get to, it's before you get to Trafalgar Square. It's between sort of. Oh, the Garrick. The Garrick. Thank you so much. Yes, it's outside the Garrick Theatre. Okay. It's me and the two actors, right? And there are literally like 50 extras who are supposed to be playing fans and news people and all this sort of thing. Plus, because we were filming there, there were a crowd of tourists and spectators. Yeah? Yeah. And of course, all these extras were mimicking, you know, screams and shouts and all this sort of thing. And I had to do my scene. The actor gets out of a limo. It's him and Vinnie Jones. I have to go up with the um, microphone and say, you know, Joey Scalini, Hollywood's hottest action star. So da, 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 and interview him and then turn to camera and say, we're here live in London and all this. And I was like, oh, my God, you know, how nerve wracking was this for an early on thing? And then I get taken home. 
you know, after it's all done. And that was it. And it never happened again. It was like I, I tasted that life for one day. <laughs> mm. And, um, you, you know, it was kind of weird, but it never led on to more things, unfortunately. Um, it did end up in the film, but yeah. And isn't it funny how you always remember the lines? Oh, yes. Doing this stuff. Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, I, I, I had to step in last minute to have a little part in a, comedy pilot i directed and um i had a i had a couple of lines and um i can i can remember them now it's uh sumo suits who do you have to fuck to get those <laughs> <laughs> what a great line hey what a great line it was. Man, it's your first line <laughs> yeah. well i'd been an extra up to this point yeah it was well, my done, first I mean, time I, on I, camera i've literally done a bit of everything i've done some extra mm. work i've done some stand-in work i've done some hand double work i've done you know pretty much any job on a film set at some point i've 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 done i've had a go at um yeah and, but you know, i mean you've been the lead in in quite a few films uh, uh it, well you have and as well as sort of as as well as supporting cast as well yeah i mean i i can i'm just looking at your indb page and i can <laughs> and you know straight away there is a poster does god exist and there you are scrolling oh, up god. to uh, ben shockley yeah so, i, I kind of wish know. that film didn't exist but there you go <laughs> um no uh, yeah it, it's, it's you know I, i'm I, you know i'm almost like you know especially at work and whatever um a little bit embarrassed about it all sometimes but uh you, you know I, i've had the go at stuff and i've done you know, feature films, short films, uh, low budget films, high budget films. You know, I've had bit parts. I've had lead roles. I've I've, I've been very lucky. I've tried a lot of things. Um, you know, some of them have been absolutely awful on on all levels. Uh, other other ones, maybe. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm quite proud of what happened in them. Uh, but sadly, you know, the, the reality is um, none of it has actually led to. Uh, work in in terms of being able to support myself as an actor and mm. being able to sort of further my career as an actor, um, which is which is a shame, which is the you know the painful part. And I know that's not just for me. I know that's for hundreds of thousands of people out there. So um, and, and you know my 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 mantra at the moment, and I say this on pr pretty much all of these podcast extras, but I, I truly believe in this is you know the thing i need to do now and the thing that we're able to do now with with technology being what it is is to continue to create and produce my own work and um you, you know uh I, and and obviously as you well know i'm in terms of acting i if i'm right for a part and there's a part available i am more than happy to to get involved um and, and, and do it because because it's fun and that's why we do all this at the end of the day we play because we're we're still kids at heart right <laughs> yeah yeah so and you know and you you you're still acting i mean you know you're one of the leads in the uh, red wolf pines the mike tack film but well yeah i mean mike is and we are actually at the moment um which again is another sort of collaboration thing where mike has has got a uh a story um, idea that he's asked me to sort of much like Richard did um, with this short, uh, you know, adapt it into a, into a feature script for him, um, which, which he wants to make, but you know, he, he has in mind for me to play, you know, I'm right for the character in this. So, um, you, you know, uh, I, I've sort of got some, an interest in it and some investment in it that way. Um, and I think what he's trying to do is, you know, surround me with, you know, named actors that just have bit parts that you just need for a day or two at the time. And, you know, that to me is quite an exciting prospect. So, uh, yeah, and it's, <laughs> we'll a, it's a very good plan. Yeah, it's a very good plan. We'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll see what happens with that. But um, exactly. But yeah, you know, I certainly have no delusions <laughs> of grandeur in any way, <laughs> shape or form with any of this stuff. And, uh, you know, I do it because I enjoy it. But as I said, I always sort of class myself as a filmmaker first and um you know a, a, a guy who enjoys acting and uh 
you know, you know, when it comes to making films with with little time and little money, I try and uh, kind of deliver on that. So, um, uh, yeah, I know Mike has, has has been happy with with the collaborations we've had so far, which uh, you know, which is largely thanks to Clive, I have to say, because um, I know Mike through uh, Clive having worked with him. So, yeah, there you go. There you go. So. Um, where can we find your work? <laughs> well, are we talking about acting now? <laughs> no, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, in terms of, I, in fact, I am actually in one of my one of my films that I made called Cross Lines. Um, that can be found on YouTube uh, if you put in British Isles E Y L E S. Uh, you'll find those films on there, and you will find my attempt at acting, directing, writing. <laughs> producing a film um yeah with no money and no time <laughs> you can be the judge <laughs> <laughs> well it's well worth checking out i quite like cross oh thank you <laughs> and uh yes you can track check out my non-acting work <laughs> at independentrunnings.com uh, I, I think actually if you want to see my only little star starring role it's on the website it's um it's a TV pilot called Moving Forward, and I'm right at the end. Let me ask you: Do you do you have any aspirations to act, Simon? Has there been anything no. that you've been interested in at any time? No, no. The only time I appear on screen is because I cannot find anybody else to do that part <laughs> or that extra or or whatever. It's I have I, I've never been one for being out front, so. That's why I like directing, so I can sort of, you know, be behind the scenes. You're in Modern Love in our in our. I section. am in Modern Love, but that's because, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> that's because there's a driving scene. Yeah, you were very good. You, yeah, and I was driving and acting. I thought you were very good. <laughs> I, I and I was operating camera at this point, and yeah, you you, you, were. you were great. That was good. That was good. Well, because my character is a cameraman, and instead of having another person there, I might as well play the part because yeah. I was the cameraman, and it it was able to sort of do things like I could be reflected in a mirror and not go, oh shit, I've caught myself in the mirror. Mm, like some films. <laughs> but, oh, I'm not going to go there. But yeah, but no, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. that could be your cameo then. That's your cameo role, yeah? <laughs> yes, but yeah, I am uh, I have a credited part in there. And um, yeah, I, I don't, I have no aspirations to, to be an actor. I mean, when I was a kid, uh, you know, I, I quite enjoyed it, you know, uh, pretending to be an actor, but uh, the whole doing part, I've sort of not really been. I don't feel it's my thing. I find so, I find it's both fulfilling and heartbreaking. All it all in all in <laughs> one weird, complicated thing. It's it's just like the question about you know how you do it. It's so complicated. Um, mm. I I really don't know. I'm still. I don't think you ever stop learning that ever. Well, no, right. but then this is the same with being a filmmaker. Absolutely, and. You know, it, it's uh, acting is it's one of these things where it, it's very subjective. It's always somebody else's point of view from the point of view that, you know, are you right for the role? Mm -hmm. You know, somebody says, yes, you're right for the role. And then other people say, I liked him in that role. I'd like to see him in more roles. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at an actor like Kevin Spacey, who was around for years and actually appeared in films mm -hmm. before his breakout role in Seven. Yeah, and the usual suspects. Yeah, well, when you when you look at things everywhere. like Glen Gary, Glen Ross, and Swimming with Sharks, and all of those sort of things, yeah, I guess yeah. he'd done those before, um, you know, seven. But I think why he sort of, he kept coming back to to the film acting and why suddenly he did break out was that he was a very well known theatre actor. Yeah, and so he was always, you know constant he was known within the sort of theater world but not so much in the film world but it but you just take from that that it doesn't matter what age you can be you can there can be a time when you're you're right oh absolutely you, you i mean suddenly there, there, there are suddenly you are you know you know yeah you're suddenly that age where you know people sort of 
recognize you not. I mean, take I mean Samuel Jackson's another actor who he was in the industry for years, kept having small parts and not in films, but then suddenly he's in Pulp Fiction and boom, you know. Yeah. And you know, it does. It, it takes a long time to be an overnight success. Yeah. Well, I don't think. Yeah, very few are an actual overnight success. And uh, yeah. you, you know, it's that thing. If 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 you know. If you know a Spielberg or a Weinstein, then then you know that helps a lot. But uh, otherwise, it's you know it, it, there is a lot of who you know definitely, um, and you know. Yeah, um, but I mean that only gets you so far. Nepotism. I mean, at the end of the day, yeah. At the end of the day, you still you have to deliver the goods. Oh, of so course. You have to have, yeah, of course. You know, as an actor, you have to have that presence on screen. You've got to fill that character, and as a director, you've got to you know bring your own voice to a story and make it interesting and relevant and you know something that people want to see yeah so it's it's that weird thing i mean as you say because filmmaking is the same as an artistic endeavor it's very fulfilling yeah and it's also very heartbreaking as well. it is i mean with both acting and filmmaking i think you know you have to do it because you love it and that's the only reason to do it because you, you, you know success and recognition and fortune and all that sort of stuff um yeah happens to five percent if that yeah it's 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 really it's got to be a labor of love uh whichever side of the camera you're on i i, I feel <laughs> and it is for me <laughs> so i think we'll end it there. lovely um, positive yay yes <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yes, um, check us out on iTunes. We're on Mixtape. So if you're on Mixtape, check us out there. Uh, we're on YouTube. Uh, just Facebook and uh, Twitter and just search uh, Movie Heaven, Movie Hell. And uh, yes, and uh, we'll, we'll be bringing you the next director in our next podcast. So uh, until then. See ya.